Gene and Roy here, just letting you know that the only 1911 you need is one with 45 ACP, because that's where real stopping power is. All right. Tell your mom I said hi. Today we're going to be looking at the Bull Armory SAS2 TAC, the uh, four and a quarter version. Now, normally this would be called a 2011 as it's a double stack 1911 chambered in nine millimeter. But I think STI slash the rebranded staccato name owns the actual 2011 term. So Bull Armory can't call it that, but it's the literal same thing as a 2011 in terms of functions, controls, and how you field strip them. And it's why you see some creative names like the 2311 and Platypus for the same weapon system also. So for brevity and simplicity, I'm just gonna refer to all of those as a 2011 as they're all just double stacked 1911s chambered in nine millimeter. Okay, there are some nuances as one's like a Glock and one's a 320, but it, it really doesn't matter. And actually, there are some minor differences from the Staccato 2011 that I noticed when comparing this to the TAC four and a quarter. And we'll get into all those differences and my thoughts about him when we go test this guy actually out. But first, let's take a moment and thank today's sponsor. The sponsor for our video today is HRT Tactical Gear. HRT provides life-saving and adaptable mission gear to fulfill a variety of roles from military to civilian to law enforcement. And I'm not sure if you've seen all the cool add-ons to their industry-leading arc belt that have been working their way out onto the market. I do wanna say a big thanks to HRT for covering the cost of the ammunition so we can test this pistol out right. And I wanna remind all of you, you can use discount code TLDCO. If you wanna pick up something, just head on over to hrttacticalgear.com and check out all their cool stuff. I'm thinking maybe we do like <laughs> falafel December for HRT. Just show the pistol. Okay, got it. The SAS-2 TAC four and a quarter is crafted by Bull Armory. And Bull is an Israeli-based manufacturer that leans on their dominance in the competitive shooting world to provide duty and warfighting pistols. And Bull pistols are engineered to operate in the toughest of conditions while still providing pricing and customer service that is unmatched in the industry. Now, in the war of 2011s and 2311s, and insert whatever other crazy marketing word there is for nine millimeter 1911s, with all the new players to the nine millimeter 1911 realm, what is the Bull SAS-2 four and a quarter and what makes it special? The SAS-2 is considered the most complete firearm in the Bull inventory and actually started as part of a larger lineup of custom options. Bull Armory got a lot of feedback from shooters and law enforcement though, that they wanted something that's lighter and faster. The law enforcement guys were like, well, whoever's faster out of the holster usually wins. And from the shooter standpoint, if you've ever carried a staccato P, you realize carrying a brick on your hip all day is a little bit obnoxious. So the custom options were culled down to the most popular version and the SAS-2 four and a quarter was born. Designed around an aluminum frame, it lightened up the 1911 design to be a better warfighting pistol and a better everyday carry pistol. And yes, yes, I'm with you. After we look at all this, we will absolutely put it toe to toe against the Staccato P. But I think you're gonna be surprised after seeing this video that you're kind of gonna see where I'm leaning. And that's even with me having the P for over a year. But tell you what, let's get this pistol out, let's go put it on the bench and go over all the different details with a fine tooth comb. Oh, before we get too far, I do wanna say there's also a pro version of the SAS-2. But with those ports and things like the chunk port on the P, you really take away a lot of the capabilities and those really aren't warfighting pistols anymore. I mean, competition, sure, those would be great, but try to shoot either of those from retention and you tell me how smart you feel. And I just want you to be thinking functionality outside of price, as the SAS-2 four and a quarter TAC may actually be a better warfighting and everyday carry pistol than a more expensive competition pistol. The thing with the highest price is not always the best pick for you. Anyway, that's one that most people are never gonna learn, but let's get to the bench. Here we have our SAS-2 TAC up close and personal. The first thing you'll notice is the matte finish along with the silver accents all over. I really love the look of this. Now let's get into it though and start with the included sights. Here we see the front sight is the standard Novak dovetail with the rear sight as a standard Glock dovetail. Many 2011s like Staccato use plates that have irons built into them and they really can't be changed out at all. 
Whereas the bull uses the entire like Glock aftermarket world to be able to put whatever you want on here really cheaply and really easily. And the bull was designed as a fighting focused pistol and fighting pistols use red dots. So the sights are blacked out on the front and rear sight. And the idea behind that, like being purposely designed for a red dot, is that you really wouldn't wanna have two different dots staring at you when you're looking at your target. And the coolest part is if you hate that idea, you can just change it out. Bull took that extra step to design it in a way that it works better for you, the end user, to have whatever you want. I will say though that during our night vision class, we did notice that our flashlights would wash out the tritium and we'd just line up the shadows anyway. Also, by having the rear sight standalone, this makes the rear sight rackable without putting stress on an optic plate. Looking at the optic plate itself then, we see a stainless steel plate that comes stock with an RMR pattern to give a one-third co-witness to our front sights. It comes with the RMR standard, like with that plate already installed, and Bull is working on some different size plates to match some of the new optic cuts that are coming out to the market. But not you, Dr. Cut, because nobody cares about you. And the actual mounting plate is secured with like four screws, like two shorts and two longs, so you never really have to worry about the mounting plate just coming off either. But if for some reason you do need hardware, Bull made it a point to use common hardware that can be purchased at like Home Depot. Just look on the technical information tab and you can download a PDF with all the torque values and all the hardware specs. And we're getting a bit off topic, but their actual FAQ is a living document. So if you put a question on there or wanna have something, they'll actually update it and it'll benefit all the other Bull Armory users. And I really like that I'm not having to find like some super rare, tiny little screw that you can only order six weeks from now from China. I'll tell you that the other duty 2011s don't give you that luxury and they absolutely don't give you that level of customer interaction, I'll tell you that. Keeping this bus moving though, for optics, I mounted the Holosun 507C with the ACSS Vulcan. And it really seems like a cheat code with the Vulcan reticle and large circle to draw your eyes back on center. And we did a video on this optic and why it's so powerful on an EDC. And I'll link to that up here if you're interested to see that and kind of want to learn more about the actual Vulcan reticle. Now, looking at the slide, we see it's coated with a nice matte finish, along with front and rear serrations, making for easy manipulation of the slide. Along the front are also two channels that have been cut out and gives a cool look to expose the barrel underneath. And at first glance, you may think these cuts are there so you could add those ports in like aftermarket if you wanted to. But remember, this is a fighting pistol and fighting pistols are designed to use red dots. So the cuts balance the additional red dot weight to give you a super fast and natural return to center. And you'll see when we go shoot because it works really well too. Moving to the rear, we see something pretty spectacular as the hammer is the same one used in the entire high-end bull competition lineup. And it's something I'm seeing that's interesting when I'm comparing the actual SAS2, like the duty lineup to the competition lineup, that they're using a ton of the competition parts in the duty lineup. I mean, it makes sense. If you want the best, use the best. It's just a pretty cool hat tip from Bull that they're including some of the competition level stuff in the actual duty side and giving you that level of quality. I'll try to stay on topic though. We mentioned the aluminum frame earlier that makes the entire pistol nice and lightweight. Loaded with a full mag, we see the total weight of, I didn't write this down, so whatever it says on the screen. But without something else to compare it to, those numbers may not make sense. So I'll do a small hat tip here on the next video we're working on. And here you can see the Staccato P weighs a whole lot more when it's fully loaded than our Bull SAS-2 does. And if you have a long range session, that P is just a peach to walk around with all day. I'll tell you that. Now though, you know what every 2011 is known for? The trigger and the SAS-2 is just ridiculous. To start, the entire design is modular. So you can change the face of the trigger from round to extended to flat or short, whatever. Now, can you technically do this on any 2011? Well, yes. But a lot of people don't realize that on a lot of other 2011s, they void the warranty if you crack them open and change out the actual trigger shoe. With the Bull, it's just simple and easy, and you keep your warranty. The trigger brake itself is a light two pounds and has a short, crisp brake with almost a laughably short reset. And I promise you, you can shoot this thing insanely quickly. 
I just love that trigger, but moving to the grip safety, we see this large grip pad that just fits in the hand perfectly. I love the silver look of this part to tie it all together. Moving down, we see the grip itself is made from a high-grade polymer that has this fantastic stippling pattern to just hold onto your hand. We even see the accent screws are designed to add additional grip. And it's just that small nod that if you're fighting for your life, every single little piece of design matters in a big way. And let's be honest, the bull comes from a place where it's battle-tested over and over from people who face terrorism on a daily basis. Where the staccato is from Texas, where the main thing those people worry about is, I don't know, heart disease. And you'll see how it all ties together in my shooting, but the grip texture just makes the whole pistol stick to your hand and just snap back to zero naturally. The grip texture is just this chef kiss of design, but the actual grip itself is 7% smaller than a normal 2011 grip. And at first glance, the actual SAS2 may seem less hefty or smaller, but as I've used it, it's actually become my absolute favorite feature. Now, I have pretty normal size hands, I wear large size gloves, but with the Staccato P, the grip is so large, I have to break my grip to work the slide in the magazine release. It wasn't a huge deal, I trained into it and learned how to make it work. But with the Bull, that 7% difference means the user can access the controls easier, allowing me to drop mags and drop the slide without breaking my grip. And it seems super small, but now my grip doesn't change at all, and I can stay right on target even when resetting from a reload. And I'll make sure to test that when we compare it against the Staccato P, as I am absolutely sure that's gonna come into play. Control-wise, the slide release is recessed and has a nice knurling, but it functions like most 2011s. There's also a usual ambi safety, and there's a nice large curved shelf to place my thumb on. Oh, also along the bottom is a magwell that has cuts on it to help in the removal of mags. The magwell also works well to help guide the mags into place and keep you from tearing up your frame if you're just out there practicing reloads. You could also change out the magwell easily by driving out the rear pin. And this would also help in running a more EDC setup if you wanted to remove the magwell and then just run the actual like flush mags. And EDCing this sounds pretty awesome actually. The mag release is a push button and it allows for a mag release extension if you need it, but those are mostly for competition weirdos. As a lefty, I don't love it, but that's it's not really a bull problem. Let me just grind down the edge of this mag release one day. The front rail also uses multiple Picatinny slots, allowing for easier connections of different size lights. And this is super fun. A lot of other 2011s have just one slot, and you can absolutely order a light that does not fit. But I, I think that's it. Oh, magazines. I want to note that the Bull does use different mags from a 2011. Staccato P mags will fit in the mag well, but they won't seat or feed correctly, so you can't use these. You can see the geometry is a bit different on the P mags to the Bull, but the Bull's design actually allows it to hold one more round than the Staccato mags do. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting pretty tired of having to get specialty pouches that fit Staccato mags though. Uh-huh. Oh, new mag pouches, yeah, that's sweet. Do they fit with, uh, do they work with 2011s? Oh, coming soon. All right, great. As with most 2011s, the SAS2 also comes in a bag with all the instructions, tools you need, patches, and etc. It should also be noted that all holsters that hold a 2011 should be universal. So my Safariland 6345 that holds my staccato also works great for our Bull SAS2. And that's the holster you guys have seen me fiddling with, and it's good to have it all set up because it's finally range time. And you're gonna see me in a little bit more of raw footage as I was really just trying to capture me learning this pistol before I kind of like put the pedal all the way to the ground. So here's some initial shots with me <laughs> leaning back for some reason. They seem nice and clean though, and the gun just snaps right back to center. First note is that like, it seemed like it just wants to come back to zero, which is great. Here I'll shoot another one that's a little bit faster. See the same thing though. Gonna do another one of those initial three shot groups, nice and slow. Now what's kind of rocking me here as I'm moving up in speed is how fast the dot is returning to center. And the whole thing just feels like it wants to race, like it's screaming at me to just, just let it run. 
Before we just shoot a bunch of rounds into a trash can though, let's do some manual of arms and test some reloads and such. Now something you're gonna see here is just how easy this reload is. That smaller size grip really makes the function of a pistol a whole lot easier to do a reload. Pretty good for no practice. All right, let's just dump it. All right, let's do eight here as fast as we can. Not really knowing this pistol. Not bad. Three fast, low, three fast, high. Transition. It's a little yucky, but okay. Three and three. There we go. Here, let's do some accuracy testing and I'll do like five or six rounds from 25 yards. Here we're shooting a little bit slower, but not as slow as I would think at 25 yards, particularly with the results we got. Looking here at the target, you can see the six shots with three of those on top of each other. The accuracy is very, very good. And I did spend some more off camera time practicing and I got faster and faster. And after spending some time with it, you could just really crank up the speed on reloads and everything else and just really move through things as long as I'm not <laughs> bumbling the reloads. But then we can get back on track. And shooting this a whole bunch really highlighted that I need to work on my fundamentals if I wanna shoot the SAS-2 four and a quarter as fast as it can go. But let's talk about a few pros and cons. And the first pro I wanna talk about is that ability of the pistol to just snap right back on target. The Bull SAS-2 four and a quarter has this amazing balance to be in perfect sight alignment every time I push it out. The slide cuts and weights are designed to return to zero easily, making rapid follow-up shots a breeze. And it's just crazy because it clicks with me. It's lightweight and I just know it's always gonna be on target. The bull and me, we see the world the same way and we speak the same language. And being that in tune with the weapon system is just, it's just something else. Now for the next pro, I wanna talk about the actual grip texture and the grip size. Having a little less size on the grip makes the controls all overall easier to use and increases my speed and accuracy significantly. The grip texture itself then adds to the overall recoil control to give you laser precision that is repeatable from shot to shot. Like, I wish you could just come out to the range with me and try this, it is bonkers. We should totally do that one day, like a viewer shoot day. Maybe one day we'll make <laughs> Jason work all that out. Now there is one more pro that we all knew was coming, that trigger. The short reset and clean break make the Bull SAS-2 incredibly fun to shoot. With the firearm snapping right back on target, the trigger makes a synergy of parts that lets you just race this pistol and keep pinpoint accuracy. Like I was pushing the envelope of my normal pistol speed, like how I normally run it, and almost all the shots were right there in the A zone. It just blew me away. Now, the last pro I wanna talk about is just all the small details. From the cuts to help the slide return to center, to the removable magwell, to the grip textured screws. Every part was designed with the warfighter in mind to give them an edge in every situation. You just have this confidence with the Bull SAS-2 and the whole time you're using it, it just feels like it wants to run. Now though, all good things should have cons. It's just how the world works and it would be a bit disingenuous if I were to show you only pros and not cons of particular products. So I hope you know that's why I do this even though some companies get pretty upset about the cons portion of some of these videos. And the Bull does have a few cons I wanna mention, and the first one is a fairly big one, and it's the difficulty in actually buying one. In its current form, there aren't any local stores to pick up a Bull or even try one out. You have to know somebody who has one to try it and see if you even like it. And Bull is working on that, like having the actual pistols at more shows or more available to the public or like at your local Cabela's or whatever weird FUD place you go to. Um, but it is currently a challenge. Plus it's often sold out, meaning you're also looking at a pretty long wait time. Now though, I wanna kind of caveat that that's the case with most 2011s as I think I waited like two or three months for my Staccato P. So a long wait time is just the nature of a 2011. I suppose it's a bit of a con that there aren't more optic plates, but Bull has said they're working on that. But that's, that's really it. That's really all I have in terms of cons. So 
what are my final thoughts? The SAS2 four and a quarter just synergized with me so well to give a lightweight platform that just wants to shoot fast, flat, and return to center. I've never clicked with the firearm so well, and the reduced size of the grip boosted the manual arms of this firearm to a higher level than I've ever seen, allowing for more accurate and faster follow-up shots. I don't think anyone could possibly recommend this pistol more than me. It is just fantastic. I had no issues, no stoppages, no nothing. And not to poke anybody in the eye, but that says a lot where my staccato is still having some hiccups over the past year with not wanting to lock back and some other odd stuff going on with the disconnector. I say we just go out and pit the bull and staccato head to head and end this debate once and for all though. And I really want to see how that shakes out because right now the one that costs $800 less is tons and tons better. But we'll save all the tears for that comparison. I hope this review of the Bull Armory SAS2 TAC 4 and a quarter was useful in your purchasing decisions. And I want to say thanks to all of our YouTube and Patreon members. You guys make it all possible that we can compare all these cool firearms and check out all these pistols and test them all out. And I want to say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about the Bull SAS2 and who's going to... I, I get so close. I get so close to the end. Who you think is going to win in the head-to-head? -head? Is it going to be the Bull or is it going to be the Staccato P? Let me know. All right, everyone. Ball shout. Come on, right overhead, airplane. Just fly directly overhead. We're not doing anything. We're just hanging out. Me and the wizards. Me, wizards, and airplanes. Uh, this last part is just for the YouTube reviewer. Uh, there aren't any real bullets in here, so hi ya, hi ya, pow, 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 pow. <laughs> okay, go away. <laughs>